Hello and welcome to this demonstration of the hybrid management system inside BitTitan's MigrationWiz. So let's start here by looking at the domain controller we have set up for this company. You can see on the left hand side we have various organization units with all the users set up accordingly. We have already set up the Office 365 tenant and run the Azure AD Connect software. So we have everybody synced into the tenant already. Now, if we look at that, you'll see here we have everybody listed. In fact, we have also run the hybrid configuration wizard too, and also migrated a test user. So if we look at that, you can see we have a user set up here. Essentially, we have everything configured. So we have a fully working hybrid system for Office 365. With all of those prerequisites now met, we can go into the migration wiz tool and we can have a look at our projects. Under the hybrid projects tab, you can see we have nothing listed yet. So let's go ahead and create a brand new project. So we choose the hybrid exchange management project from this button here. And we can start off with some criteria, which is the project name and we'll set up a new customer. With this data now entered, we can hit save and go to the next step, which is to set up the source endpoint. Now there's not much to configure here. We just have to give it a name because it is the exchange on-premises endpoint. So we can hit add on there. And the destination endpoint, we do need to provide details about because this is the connection to the Office 365 tenant. Now I've entered those pieces of information and you can see I've also verified the 365 credentials as well, and set up the target delivery domain, which is the on Microsoft name for the Office 365 tenant. And then we just hit add and continue to our next step. Now in the summary of the project, what we need to do is just have a look at advanced options, because this does talk about how we might handle our delegation um, from a default perspective. And you can see here we have different levels of delegation, which I'm gonna go into a little bit later on. But the, the default one is the one level up and one level down. And you can see the other settings here around uh, retaining the source mailbox settings, which are things like the, the POP and IMAP and ActiveSync controls, and also the notification emails that go to the project owner with the status of all the batches when they start, stop, or possibly error. So we'll hit save on there, and we are ready to go into the main project itself and see that uh, we are ready to set up the batches and configure the users. To bring in the mailboxes into the migration wear system, we have two options. The firstly being to run the agent, and secondly to do the import CSV. So to run the agent, we just hit start discovery, and you can see here that we can download the agent onto a machine, preferably an exchange management server that has rights to obviously to the exchange backend, and that will go away and create uh, the upload files needed to get them in. Um, it does automatically process that update and bring it into migration with based on the set of criteria we set in the agent and i'll cover that very shortly second option though is to use the csv file now with the csv you can see there's a download link here we can use to uh, grab what information is, is necessary but we've also provided a powershell script here which will go out and collect that information for you then you can manipulate the csv file and change the batches and do whatever you need to do to to generate the import that you require You'll notice here that there are three different options for how those mailboxes are handled when you come in. And this is the same for the agent as well as the import CSV, and we'll see the agent option shortly. But essentially what we're doing here is saying on the first option, only batch new mailboxes that the system doesn't know about. So don't touch anybody else in the system, only bring in people we haven't seen before. So that's a, a good option to have if you're, you're starting out fresh or you're making some changes to it and you want to update um, only the new mailboxes. Secondly, the update mailboxes for users that are in a not submitted state. This means that uh, we can bring in and change batches around and do things provided they're not currently syncing or finalizing or the like. And lastly, only update mailboxes that live in an unbatched state. So mailboxes that uh, didn't have a tag attached to them in terms of a batch name, they go into unbatched users. We want to start getting those people out into batches and we can use either the CSV import or the option in the agent to perform those tasks. But here we're going to use the agent. So I'll cancel that and close this down. You can see I've already got the agent ready to go. And when we hit next on that, it'll pick up the hybrid projects that we currently have in place, which is just the one here, and also our default work group, which you'll be familiar with if you've used MigrationWiz before. 
But on the smart batching, you can see that we can select different criteria out of the Active Directory to use as our basis for batching. So we're going to use country for this one. And I'm going to put city as a second one, but just quickly show you that we do have different custom attributes and other items that you can select. So we'll choose city here and I'll hit start and I will come back once that is uh, approaching completion. Here we are then waiting for that to just do its final completion stage, which will take that information and upload it automatically into the Migration Wiz backend. And you can see that is done. It's found 2019 mailboxes. So I'll just hit done there and go back to the Migration Wiz screen so we can bring those users in. You can see then that on the Migration Wiz front screen, it's now ready to bring that information in. So we have two different sections to answer for here. We have the delegation handling, which uh, gives us the option to say, how are we handling the delegates? Do we want to do a full tree hierarchy and delegates of delegates of delegates? And you can see how that might work with uh, the different batching. And also the, the one level up and one level down to say, you know, who am I delegate to and who am I delegate of? And don't process further than that point. And obviously the none as well. So we're going to choose one level up and one level down for this one, which is our default option. And also the mailbox handling, coming back to what we were talking about before to say, how do we want to handle the mailboxes if they already exist in the system? Are we just updating people that are in unbatched, for example, or are we bringing in everybody nice and fresh, which is what we're doing here. So we'll choose the top one. The learn more option here, uh, you'll see if you were to click on that, it does take us to the help center. And you can see from here, we start talking about uh, in a lot more detail about what those options really do entail. So in this case, I'm just going to choose the one level up, one level down for delegates and batch new mailboxes and hit the import function here and come back in a minute when it's done. We can see then that the system has taken on board these batches, which we had set up, but not everybody had a tag with either country or city. And you can see that there's quite a few people that uh, do not because with the amount of users in these batches, anybody that didn't have a country or a city has gone into this unbatched area. And this takes us back to what I was saying before about if you want to rebatch everybody, what we would do is probably run the agent again and grab something else like a custom attribute or, or some other field to do the batching on and then select the last option, which is only bring in people that are in unbatched users. And that will take them out of this unbatched area and put them into a batch layout according to this here. And that makes it easy to keep adding and adding different setups for batches. If we decide that we want to change people around from these batches here, we can obviously just re-import them with different criteria and they will move around accordingly. If we do get into a point where we want to completely wipe out everything and start again, apart from batches that we might have run as like a proof of concept or, or others that are in a not in a not submitted state, we do have the option up here you can see to delete all batches, which is a nice easy way of cleaning out the system. To explore these batches just a little bit further, you can see that if I click on those, it brings up all the mailbox information about them. Also, what type of mailbox they are. They might be a room, they could be shared, they could be equipment, but in this case, you can see their users. And you can see the item count and the mailbox sizing and when we last did something on the mailbox. So in this case, it's when we last imported them, but also the view details tab. And this shows us more information about the OU that they belong to and whether or not they have OA, IMAP, POP or Active Sync enabled for them and uh, different items around the item count and the mailbox sizing and the like. But certainly what I am interested in here is for the batches that have this tag next to them. And you'll notice that if we do have somebody with one of those tags, that is denoting that there are people in the batch that have delegates applied to them. So this means that if we go through and have a look at these people, we can see this particular person has a delegate relationship. And if we click on that, we can see exactly what that is. So you can see this person, Sebastian Piper, uh, has a delegate here, Anthony Morrison, who is currently in Unbatched. And also that person is a delegate of nobody, as you can see here, there's no mailboxes assigned. If they did have a delegate, uh, if they were a delegate of somebody else, it would show up here as well. Now, this is important because we do like to keep people together when we run them in different uh, batches. So what we would want to do here is we can say uh, that we want to check for delegates of this particular batch and anybody that is a delegate of anybody in the batch, 
that is not currently in the batch, we can bring them in so we can make sure that they do get migrated together. And to do that, we just quite simply click on the check for delegates button and that will say, yes, we do have four delegates which should be in this batch. Um, and we can just say move, say move delegates here and that will bring those people in and you can see the batch now has 56 people in there. If we go down and look at this uh, chap again, Sebastian, we'll see that now we do have Anthony Morrison who is now showing that they are in that particular batch. It does not have the little warning error to say they're in a different batch there. So it means now they will get migrated together. And that is a very important feature of what we're doing here. We like to keep the delegates with the people they are delegates of and delegates to in the same batch to make those migration strategies a bit easier to work with. I'm going to go ahead now and start one of these batches off for syncing. So I'm going to grab this batch of seven people and I'm just going to hit start sync and you'll see the flyout that we get. So firstly, it does a check to say, are you missing any delegates that should be migrated with these users in this particular batch? Uh, and it, in this case, we are not. Uh, we choose the endpoint, which is your off, sorry, the Office 365 uh, setting, which is talking back to the on-premise exchange. So that's the endpoint that you would have set up with the hybrid configuration with it. Um, if you've got new ones set up, we can do a refresh and grab the new ones. And also the error count. If we want to increase that any, we can do so here. And likewise, we can schedule the migration as well. So I'm going to not schedule this so we can get this done immediately and just hit start sync and that will start that process in the background. While that is syncing, I just want to show you if we go into unbatched users, we can grab any of these people here and grab a small subset of these. We can then say we're going to move them and I'm going to move them out into a different batch. And you can see how easy it is just to grab that particular batch. And you can see what it's telling us here is that, okay, great, we're going to move these people, these four mailboxes. Do you want to bring the delegates with them? And that is a common theme throughout the entire hybrid system is that delegates will go, will try and follow their appropriate mailboxes. So we'll say, yes, we will move those delegates as well and hit move. And you'll see that once that's done, if we go back to that new batch here, the Stonehouse batch, you can see it now has seven people in it and it has a tag because people inside it do have delegation. And we can just click on these, we can see what they are and you can start to see how this information becomes more important um, as we go forward with these migrations. After the batch has completed its sync process, you'll see that it has a label change here, now says synced and the button changes to finalization. So we are now able to finalize this batch, which I will do by clicking that. You can see the flyout is slightly different to the sync uh, options. Um, firstly, we have the option to use custom batch settings to override what was in initially there for the mailbox itself. I'm going to use the default ones that come from the mailbox. I can select a retention policy if I want to, but importantly, I can also grab the license as well. So I can assign a license to those users as they go through that process and will assign the location as well. I will then say so we can schedule finalization. In this case, again, I'm just going to kick it off immediately, but we could schedule a finalization if we wanted to. And I do need to click on the agree button here to say I do understand this is a permanent uh, migration and it can't be undone. So we'll go ahead and hit the start migration tab. After that process completes in the back end, you can see that the tag now has gone to finalize for the batch and there's no more actions required on that one. So if we have a look in the 365 admin center, you'll see that now we have users which were part of those batches assigned with licenses and mailboxes. In fact, if we look at the mailbox listing here, we can see they are also uh, present here, which means the users are now free to log on to their 365 mailbox and use that. The transition will take place automatically as it does on Outlook with the hybrid system. So basically with that particular batch, we are done. On behalf of the BitTitan team, thank you for watching this demonstration of our hybrid management tool. And we hope to see you soon on our website, bittitan.com. Thank you very much.